Democratic congressmen recently announced they are introducing legislation to reform federal marijuana policy. Their bills would allow states to decide whether to prohibit marijuana and provide a system of marijuana regulation and taxation in states where it's legal. Joining us to discuss these marijuana reform bills as well as federal prosecution of medical marijuana is our very own HuffPost Washington Borough Chief Ryan Grimm and former White House Drug Policy Advisor Kevin Sabat. Guys, welcome. Ryan, tell us a little more about these bills. Sure. Th thanks. Thanks so much for having us here. We're we're here with Kevin Sabet, who uh, was recently named the number one enemy of the pot legalization movement. Is that is that right? Yeah, I have the medal stuff. framed at home. Worked in three administrations. Yeah. Uh, so Bush, Clinton, and and the Obama administration for the first for the first couple of years. So I I tweeted out earlier, asked people to to send in questions for him. Uh, so if you have more questions, send them to at, at Ryan Grimm and we'll get them to him. Uh, the thing about Kevin is that uh, what makes him dangerous to the Rolling Stone crowd is that he's effective at delivering the anti-legalization argument, which is extremely unusual among <laughs> the drug warrior set because most of them you know, fi find it so difficult to, to have a rational conversation about it that it's all, uh, you know, it, you get into all mm -hmm. kinds of insanity like we got into last week. I won't even mention what the, <laughs> what the one guy said last week. So, uh, let, so the first one we'll start with here uh, is from uh, Sound, of, uh, Sound of Cylons. Okay. Are you anti-cigarettes, beer, liquor, guns, etc.? If not, is this not philosophically dishonest? Yeah. Great question. I'm really happy to be here, uh, especially in the studio. Um, it's, it's not about being anti-something or pro-something. It's about what is the best policy to reduce both the harms of a certain behavior itself, whether it's those things that were just mentioned, or marijuana in this case, and while at the same time reduce the harms of implementing that policy. So we all have to acknowledge that every policy has ups and downs. I happen to think at the end of the day, when you look at the science, uh, the, the cons for me outweigh the pros for legalization. That doesn't mean that I'm happy with everything that's going on now. There's no way you can be happy with a lot of the uh, arrest severity that's going on. There's no way you can ha be happy with the racial disparities in arrests that we see in places where, uh, you know, white kids have a basement to smoke in. A lot of times black kids are out in this public mm -hmm. stoop. They're more likely to be arrested. Those are things I think we should change. So it's, it's just about how, that kind of How do of you mitigate that then? Well, I, I think you don't need to legalize marijuana in order to mitigate that. What you can, what you can actually do is uh, make sure that that person who is out on the stoop smoking pot doesn't, you know, our knee-jerk reaction isn't jail or a long-term arrest record to stigmatize them from getting a job, but our knee-jerk reaction is, does this kid have a, have a chance at an economic opportunity? Is there a job for him? What, what about education? Those kinds of things have to be explored. So this, this is a good follow-up yeah. to, to that one. This is from uh, at Dr. Iffel, Dan, Dan Riffle. Uh, cigarette smoking is way down, especially yeah. among teens, yet we haven't arrested or forced, any, forced treatment on anyone. Why can't we do that for pot? Well, two, twofold answer. First of all, um, the thing about cigarettes is that let's look at the baseline where we are with cigarettes. With all of the education and every, uh, every single law on cigarettes out there, I mean, I don't even know where you can smoke these days. Even in your own home, you're going to get kicked out by your girlfriend or wife or your spouse or whatever uh, if you smoke. So the issue is, even with all these sort of soft prohibitions, 27% of Americans still smoke, one out of four Americans. Over 55% of Americans drink. How many people smoke marijuana? Our household surveys say about 8% of people are regular users. So, you know, something about illegality does drive use down. Even when you have, we, as we've had this big pushback against cigarettes, which I think is good. The second part of the answer is, I think cigarettes are the last example for a policy we would want for marijuana. Let's look at our cigarette policy over the last 80 years and not forget what happened. We had big tobacco, peddling tobacco, saying, first of all, it's medicine. You know, in the 50s, mm -hmm. tobacco was medicine. It's pretty interesting now with marijuana. Um, they downplayed the harms to kids. They actually make money off of addiction. That is no model for marijuana. What's it, what if we use the, the current model okay. for tobacco, which is uh, advertising is extremely sure. restricted. Right. Uh, if you sell to sell to kids, you're you're going to get a huge right. you're going to get a huge fine. Yeah. Uh, the taxes are extremely high, and the money used uh, with you know the revenue that's raised is then spent <laughs> on a public health education yeah. campaign to try to reduce demand. For I what, think it, why couldn't that work? Well, because I think it sounds marijuana. great, and I, I agree in principle with that. But in reality, I really don't think that would happen. So here's the green in principle. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you what I mean by that. Okay. Well, no, <laughs> but but in green principle with a public health approach to focus on education. What I think, why I think that wouldn't happen under with marijuana legalization is that for every dollar we get in tobacco taxes, and
and tobacco taxes are high right now. I mean, that's why we have a black market in this country and around the world, but that's another story. For cigarettes, for every dollar in taxes, we spend 10 in social costs. So, uh, you know, that's a great, and that's with today's policy, not 80 years ago. Um, I just don't think it's the right path, and still more people smoke than, than smoke pot. Right. Um, let me just, let's get another one here. Okay. Why does he think all use is abuse and requires treatment and or jail time? I guess the point of that is, yeah, I don't. You know, is, there some, is there some use that should be legally yeah. acceptable? Well, here's the issue. I don't think all use is right. abuse. So first of all, I, you know, I subscribe to the clinical definitions that are, you know, the medical communities come to, which are, you know, we have, abu we have use. Actually, now they're changing the definitions. We have addiction and so mm -hmm. on. Um, so all use is not abuse and addiction. I get that. I get that only one out of six kids who try pot will become addicted to it, okay? I get that five out of six actually won't have that many problems. But I'm very concerned about that one out of six because they cause the problems, they cause the social costs, they cause the IQ drop, they cause the car crashes. And so our policies, I think, should be focused on that one out of six that can't handle it. And I, you know, I, I'm not equating the guy, you know, you want to go smoke pot in, in your house and you're not having much contact with outside society, you don't teach my kid, take him to mm -hmm. school, drive my car, fly my plane, you, you go for it. Right. But, and I don't think you should be in jail for it. However, it's, it, I, it's very different when we're talking about kids. And it, it, it gets very different when we talk about in the kind of society we have, which is that we do interact with each other. So what, what would that type yeah. of prohibition look like? Okay. The, under the current system, it's, you're right, it's a, you, know, you have cer a certain number of people who are the, who are the real problems, okay. but your chances of getting busted have much more to do either with random chance mm -hmm. or, with right. or with class and race. Right. So what would be a more rational way if you did keep so, prohibition in place? So I think the more rational way, and this is where I get to plug what I'm trying to work on with Patrick Kennedy, is Project SAM. It stands for... Smart Approaches to Marijuana. I have a Sam question here, too. Okay, I'll, okay, we'll I'll look for that while you're... Learn about SAM.org. You can go... So anyway, what, what we're trying to do is basically say, look, first, that rational policy, it's four pillars. First one, let's get the public health information about today's marijuana to the American people. Today's pot is not the Woodstock weed our parents smoked in their dorm room innocuously. It's mm -hmm. five to six times greater in potency and strength. Number two, let's reduce the negative consequences of prohibition. That means that if you get arrested for pot or if you get caught for it, you shouldn't have an arrest record that stigmatizes mm -hmm. you for your whole life. That doesn't make sense. You should be able to get a job 10 years later. I think that's ridiculous, and I would side on the, you know, with you and others on that. The third thing is, um, but we have to be very wary of the tobacco and alcohol experience we've had in this country. Mm -hmm. These are industries that are huge. You, it's impossible to raise taxes on alcohol because there's such a huge uh, 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 lobbying, I mean, right behind us in, in D.C., and mm -hmm. I think it'll be a mess with our, our First Amendment to allow marijuana legalization. We didn't have a First Amendment. We could maybe talk. I'm right. very concerned about advertising. Fourth, with medical let's make sure people with cancer get the kind of marijuana that's non-smoked mm -hmm. that they need. We don't need to legalize smoked marijuana in order to do that. On Project Sam, we, uh, f the question here is, uh, since, since you oppose taxing and regulating right. marijuana, how does Project Sam propose to reduce prohibition-related violence? So, a prohibition-related violence does not come from marijuana. Let's be very clear. Marijuana, the marijuana trade is not especially violent. Most people buy, do not buy pot. They get it from a friend or family member, or they, they get it in another way. So, we want to talk about prohibition-related violence. We're going to start talking about crack markets, heroin markets. There's some wonderful examples with a drug a lot market. Of those, uh, a lot of those cartels right. and, and those... those folks are propped up by the revenue they make from pot. Fifteen percent of cartels, according to Rand, fifteen to twenty percent get it from marijuana. Right. Big enough chunk right. to worry about. Yeah, 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 right. Big enough chunk to worry about, not the vast majority. If you're worried about organized crime, though, the answer is not in marijuana. That's just not where the action is. It's in the other drugs. So what, last question. Okay. So, uh, you know, you, 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 worked in, you worked in the White House. Yeah. Uh, so t tell us about the actual process of going out and investigating a medical marijuana dispensary and getting from the point of finding it in, to, in, to indictment? Well, I mean, I'm not a DEA agent. What I will say, though, is that it's a definitely a long process. I mean, you have to make sure with juries and everything, you have, a, you know, airtight sealed investigations on the on these establishments, which, whether you like it or not, it's very, they're very plainly violating federal law. Now, whether you put resources into doing that is another question, but it takes a long time to do that. We're talking a matter of how long? Probably six months to a year. And how many people working on that? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Right. A, a lot of people, but they're also right. doing other things. Right. Um, and it's certainly not a total priority, because if it was, we wouldn't have thousands of shops in Colorado and California. And by the way, we had them in the Bush administration, Clinton administration, and now. So it's right. not a partisan issue. And we're out of time for All this right. now, but we can continue this on Twitter. I'm happy to do uh, that. At, at Kevin Sabet, um, at Ryan Grimm. I'm sure he'll be happy to respond to any yeah. of your questions on Love Twitter. To. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ryan. Well, Ryan, Kevin, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us here.
As you guys know, the conversation always continues here, and I just want to point you to normal stereotype in our comments section 52 seconds ago saying, daily user for medical and recreational purposes here. I'll be glad to discuss this debate with any of you. So if you want to keep that conversation going, as is the case here at HuffPost Live, you can hit them up.